Hey, it's Jordan with Studio GBK, and today I take an old table that I found on the side of the road and turn it into a work of art using some epoxy and a garden rake. I end up taking it apart and chiseled a chunk out of my hand, but besides that, it went great. My neighbors told me where it was located, which was less than two blocks away, so I drove over there, picked it up, and took it back to my shop. Now, people tell me about free wood all the time, and it's generally useless information, but in this case, it was an exception. As you can see, I removed these strips of wood on the top using my pry bar and a little bit of grip strength, and this was tremendously satisfying. From there, I proceeded to sand down the surface. I started with 100 grit at first because I didn't want to sand too deep, but ended up switching to 40 grit because I needed to remove it faster and more aggressively. The 40 grit did a much better job at removing all that old glue that was on the surface, and after an hour of sanding, I managed to get it fairly clean looking. I'll be covering it with colored epoxy later, so I'm not worried about it being perfect just yet. I just need a clean but rough surface for the epoxy to adhere to. After sanding that surface, I peeled off this red veneer edge banding with my pry bar, which I'm sure was all the rage back in the day, but it had to go. And the edges of this table were very sharp because it was probably built many years ago when adults didn't care if kids hit their head on the edge or not. But I do care. So I decided to round this edge off with my router and put an eighth inch chamfer all the way around. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that routers aren't my favorite tool in the shed and are very dangerous. My skills have improved and this went fairly smooth. After that, I sanded off the edges to remove that old finish, and I was very careful here to keep the sander moving and not stay in one place for too long, because that would ruin this perfect circle that's already been built for me. If you're wondering who built this, I saw on the base that this was built by N something furniture company in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And after some research, I found that it was made by Northern Furniture Company, which was founded by George B. Mattoon in 1881, who actually fought in the Civil War for the Union when he was only 14. He was in 43 battles, had two horses shot from under him, but was never wounded or went to the hospital, and later started a furniture company so big it made it to the stock market. And I must say, what a savage. So shouts out to George for fighting for my ancestors' freedom and also making this table. I switched to my belt sander to clean off that lower edge, again making sure I keep the sander moving so I don't ruin this circle. This was a Christmas gift from my dad who got it for me after watching one of my videos and realized that I needed one. What an amazing guy. Once I had the whole thing sanded, I mixed up some art resin to seal the surface of this table, and sealing the surface basically traps the air and moisture that's inside of the wood, so that when I pour that final finish, it will stop the wood from releasing air and causing a bunch of bubbles. And I just spread that all around and scraped all the excess back into the cup. I want this layer to be as thin and flat as possible because it's just a platform for that final design that I'm about to pour. And after letting that dry for two days, it really brought out the natural character of the wood and almost looks good enough to sell as is. But that would be boring, and that's just not who I am. I should have taped the bottom to catch those drips, but I forgot, and they came off pretty easily with a chisel. And at this point, I'm almost ready to pour. I taped all the way around the bottom edge with frog tape to protect it from the crazy colors that I'm about to pour. I also taped that bottom edge to catch the drips that will come down, and now I'm finally ready to pour. The color scheme that I'll be using here is titanium white, pyrrole orange, cerulean blue, violet, and yellow. These colors were inspired by an abstract painting that I saw at a rich person's house in San Francisco, and this is going to be a challenging pour because I'm racing against the clock to mix up all the epoxy add in all the different colors, pour the colors, and do the design before it dries. And tabletop epoxy dries very quickly in comparison to say like a deep pour epoxy. And I usually eyeball my pours, but I didn't want to waste a bunch of epoxy and I knew this was going to make a mess. So I calculated exactly how much I would need so I don't have gallons of it rolling off the side of my table and onto the floor. And I'm not a mathematician, so thank God for Google. 
The table is 42 inches in diameter, which means the area is 9.621 square feet. And at an eighth inch thickness, I'll need roughly 0.94 gallons to cover it. So I just rounded up to an even gallon, poured half a gallon of resin and half a gallon of hardener and started mixing. And I haven't done a math problem with Pi since like high school, but what they didn't tell us is that the internet will solve these math problems for us. So geometry class was essentially a waste of my time. As you can see, I mixed all the different colors together with the resin and yes, I'm rushing and feeling lots of pressure because I've never done this before and I don't want it to dry early on me. I almost wish that I hired someone to help, but I managed to mix all these colors up and from there I started pouring. I started with purple in the middle followed by white, then blue, then orange, and moved back to purple and more white. This is all gonna look different when it's done. So it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. with some yellow and blue to finish it off on the edges. And this is for sure the biggest mess I've ever made with epoxy because it's my first time pouring this much onto a flat surface and not into a mold. So you can see it dripping off the edges there, but it's all a part of the plan. Now it's time to use the garden rake. This was only $20 at Home Depot, but I'm about to make magic with it. I started at the top center of the table and raked a straight line down towards the bottom. I moved to the other side and repeated that same motion, but that bucket got in my way. And then I did the same thing on the other side. Then I cleaned off the tines very quickly with a random t-shirt because I'm rushing and I'm not about to look for rags. And I cross hatched with the rake again, following that same pattern. And wow, this is already looking crazy. If you're wondering, no, I did not take mushrooms or any psychedelics during this project. Shouts out to the D.A.R.E. program. If you don't know what that is, it was a program where police came to our schools and told us that drugs are bad which I think was positive because even if you did go on to do drugs, at least you were warned. You know who comes to schools now? <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. After finishing the crosshatch, I lifted up the table to make that pattern just flow. And I lifted it in a couple different directions to really make it more wavy than it already is and ensure that this piece is one of a kind and unlike anything you've ever seen before. This did make more of a mess than I've ever made with resin and actually glued my six foot level to the floor, but I wouldn't take it back for the world. Although ripping that off reminded me of King Arthur's sword. There were a lot of micro bubbles in the finish, so I used my heat gun and torch to eliminate them. And I've said it before, but I'll reiterate that I don't touch the epoxy with the torch. I keep it a few inches away and let the heat and CO2 pop the bubbles or the flame can ruin the finish. I stayed there for about two hours, monitoring this pour and erasing new bubbles as they came up. And this didn't go perfect, but I'm very satisfied with how this looks for my first time. I went home and let that dry for 24 hours. And when I came back the next day, it dried nicely without too many unexpected bubbles. Sometimes bubbles come back after you leave, like they're just waiting to ruin a good project but there were hardly any on this one, so that made me happy. I do feel like the epoxy was too transparent in certain areas and allowed the wood to show underneath, which I didn't want, but there isn't much I can do about that now that it's dry, so I just have to accept that this is abstract art and I'll have to make another one that is light years better. I did have some people saying that they liked the visible wood and thought it was cool, so let me know what you think in the comments. 
I peeled off all the tape that was supposed to be protecting the bottom and it did a fairly good job, but there was some epoxy that slipped through the cracks and I had to clean this thing up quite a bit. So I used a chisel and a knife to cut off the excess, but it's always easier to clean before the epoxy is fully cured and still has that gummy consistency versus when it's fully hardened and you have to sand it. After cleaning it up, I put it back on that base and here's what it looked like. And I just love how the natural light of the sun makes these colors pop. And there were lots of very kind people walking by and telling me how amazing this looks, which I super appreciate as an upcoming woodworker and artist. Um, I also asked several people what they see in this table, which was like a live Rorschach, however you say that, a live Rorschach, Rorsch, Rorschach test. And I got many answers, including scales, feathers, a dragon, a fire, volcano, and my favorite, which was a bird. And you can clearly see here, there's a beak and the crazy wings behind it. But I'd love to know what you guys see here, so drop a comment and let me know. It definitely changes depending on the angle of the dangle, but I'm curious to see here what my viewers see in this abstract art that I made. What I didn't like about this is that I now have this ultra modern looking tabletop with a base that's potentially 100 years old, which really doesn't match. So I had a decision to make and I decided to take this apart. Oh, durable and turned it into a wall piece this is because i don't think buying one of these expensive fancy bases that i was looking at is appropriate for something that didn't turn out how i wanted that would be a clash of its own and i plan to do another one that will be amazing and that i'll add a base to and sell it for thousands of dollars but this just isn't it this is a prototype and i know this might make some of you mad but this is my channel okay and there's nothing you can do about it. Actually, there is. Comment and let me know if this absolutely needs to be made into a table, and I will consider it if I get enough comments saying that, but for now, I took this thing apart and started turning it into a wall piece, and it was not as easy as I thought. George really built some strong furniture because even after getting the screws out, I had to chisel these wood pieces that were glued with, I don't know where this glue came from, but it, it was tough. And I sent that chisel straight into my palm. Ooh, damn. <sighs> but I guess that's maybe the table's way of paying me back for taking it apart after it's been so solid for all these years. Um, after taking it apart, I realized that I now have two halves of a circle with no support and this thing will fold in half if I lift it up without adding some extra support. So I grabbed these strap ties from Home Depot to stabilize the back. Uh, they're typically used for framing, but today I'm using them on this piece and I've never pre-drilled this carefully in my entire life because if I drill too far, and this goes through the face of this beautiful uh, table turned wall art, I'll probably be ruined forever. Like those who didn't listen to the D.A.R.E. program. But I managed to pre-drill all 92 holes perfectly without ruining this, and after screwing it all together, I taped off the edges with frog tape and spray painted everything black. I attached some D-rings and picture wire, and this project is done. Using AI, here's how it looks on a variety of backgrounds. And thank you all for watching. I will see you on the next one.